What I did was I took it upon myself to hand make, uh, yes, I'm not kidding, hand make invitations for every appraiser in the area. And it was 40 plus appraisers. It was everybody that I could find. I excluded nobody. Whether I had had good experiences or bad experiences, it didn't matter to me. My goal was to reach out and say, hi, <laughs> I've been appraising in this area for years and years and years, but I'm now moved here. My office is here and I would like to get together. Originating from deep inside the Rocky Mountains, transported through the power of the internet, and arriving inside your tiny earbuds, it's the Appraiser Coach Podcast. Minisode. 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 Okay, appraisers, I want to know what is it that keeps you <laughs> from getting out of your cave and saying hi and shaking hands with other appraisers. I don't get it. I don't get it. I want to pause here and remind you we are sponsored by ANOW Software. ANOW, of course, is the software that I use uh, to manage and take care of everything that happens at the office. You, too, can do the same thing. Check it out. Go to anow.com slash coach. One more time. It's anow.com slash coach. Okay, let me set this up, folks. I tried it again. In fact, let me let me just back up before I even tell you what happened recently, and I'll tell you uh, history with this. I have struggled over the years, and I've been appraising, I don't know, two, two plus decades, right? And I have on occasion, hasn't been very often, and, and the honest truth is, is because I'm tired of getting jilted. Uh, I'm I'm the uh, I'm the shy guy that uh, you know asks for a few dates on Tinder and and got turned down a few times and I'm I'm intimidated to ask for any more. Um, that that was a, a a hypothetical. That was an analogy. I've tried over the years and, and and I'll tell you I get burned every time and I'm not giving up. I'm not giving up. I'll tell you that. But uh, um, when I first moved into this area, uh, now I've been appraising this area for a very well since the beginning. Uh, since since the year that I started, which was uh, mid '90s, uh, I've been appraising the area that I live. But when I moved up here from a nearby area, again I was covering this area, but not living. My office was not in this area; it is now. When I first moved up here, I thought, you know what? I'm going to reach out, and I'm going to I'm I'm not going to play these games that I see a lot of my fellow appraisers playing. And that is we, you know, we go out there and quote unquote compete against each other. And, and, uh, and, you know, maybe we review each other's work, but we really don't know each other. Right. I didn't want to do that. I, I thought, you know, um, I'm an introvert, but I'm going to get outside my comfort level, my, my circle, if you will, and, uh, extend myself. So, what I did was I took it upon myself to hand make, uh, yes, I'm not kidding, hand make invitations for every appraiser in the area. Now, this was 40 plus appraisers. I remember the number very distinctly. Now, it was not just the town I was located in. It was the surrounding area as well. And it was 40 plus appraisers. It was everybody that I could find. I excluded nobody. Whether I had had good experiences or bad experiences, it didn't matter to me. My goal was to reach out and say, hi, <laughs> I've been appraising in this area for years and years and years, but I'm now moved here. My office is here and I would like to get together. Uh, I even offered to buy lunch. Okay, I offered to pay for lunch. I offered to spend my own uh, money to um, just to get together. I thought that might be a, a, a lure, if you will. My goal was to get people to get over their fear. I, I don't know what that fear is. I'll talk about that after the break a little bit. Um, but there is a fear, I think, of meeting with, greeting with, associating with other appraisers. And I don't get it. I don't understand it. But I wanted to overcome that with maybe, uh, you know, they say the, the uh, way to a man's heart's through a stomach, right? I think uh, it's probably true for females as well. So I thought I'd reach out and say, hey, let's get together. Uh, no agenda. Um, there was no, nothing on the docket. I, I, I wasn't going to open up my briefcase and give him a, a multi-level marketing pitch. Uh, I just wanted to get together. That was it. That was the only agenda. The only agenda was come, eat food, talk, and leave. 
Okay. Now, some of you have heard this story before, and you know that uh, four appraisers showed up to that. Uh, no, one, two, three. Yeah, four appraisers showed up to that meeting. Um, now, that sounds pretty good, right? 40, that's 10%, right? Well, here's the problem. One of them was me. Okay, I was the guy that invited everybody. One of them was my father. He probably came out of al- obligation. Another was my brother, who was also an appraiser in the area at the time. <laughs> okay, you see where this is going? And then there was one other. Shout out to Mark. Thanks, Mark, for showing up to that meeting, I don't know, 10 years ago. Uh, it's been longer than that, 15 years ago. Um Yeah. (laughs) One other appraiser, if you don't count my family, showed up to that meeting. And guess what? It was a fun meeting. I did buy lunch and uh, we had a great talk and uh, Mark was very friendly. And, uh, you know, here's the interesting thing about that. Uh, It's now been 15 plus years since that that meeting. And Mark and I, I believe, I guess you'd have to ask him, but I believe we remain pretty good friends. I reach out to him on a regular basis. Uh, talk to him on a regular basis, run into him sometimes at inspections or what have you. He's also a realtor in the area. And so I have contacted him and uh, met him at properties. And we have a very cordial relationship. In fact, he is a general certified and does some farm ranch and commercial properties here locally. And he's the go-to guy. There's, There's about three or four people that I know here locally that do commercial work. But um, there's a reason I send work to Mark. When I get a call and, and you appraisers, you residential appraisers know you get a call on a regular basis, not a regular, but once in a while, we get a call and say, hey, you know, we have a, a commercial thing or we've got a farm and we need it appraised. And do you have any recommendations? Well, guess what? I'm not familiar. I don't have anything against any of the other commercial guys, uh, but I just don't know them very well. Maybe I've run into them at a class or two, um, but I certainly haven't reviewed their work, especially the commercial side of things. So I don't know enough to make recommendations, but I'll tell you, I'll recommend now, now with a caveat, I've never reviewed Mark's work either, but typically what happens is when a call comes in, I've instructed my employees, those that answer the phone to say, you know, Dustin doesn't, can't vouch for Mark's work on the commercial side, but he certainly can vouch for his work on the residential side. Um, And and he would uh, recommend Mark. Just know that he hasn't seen his work, but he's a great guy, and I think he'll do a great job for you. I've sent – over the last 15 years, I've probably sent at least one deal a year to him, all because of one meeting where he was willing to extend himself, get out of his comfort zone, emerge from his cave, and be a part of a, of a, of a local luncheon. Oh, here's the other thing. I've reached out to Mark on more than one occasion with regard to uh, significant assistance as well. There's been cases when I have done residential work that has had an element of commercial with it uh, that I felt was outside my purview. And I've reached out to Mark and on occasion, he and I have done stuff together where we bid quite high on the fee. I do the residential side. He does the commercial side. We collaborate. We put it together. We give each other credit and we turn it in. Again, this is extra business. Now, that's not the reason that I extended the invitation. The, 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 the sole reason to extend the invitation was to say, hi, I moved up here. Uh, uh, let me give you an analogy, okay? When my wife and I were first married, we moved into a college town, and we moved into a basement apartment, and we moved in, and this basement apartment was located in a residential area, okay? So we were surrounded and it wasn't just a residential area. It was, for lack of a better term, it was an old folks area. Okay. Now, I am an old folk now, so I can say that with affection. But but really, I mean, the individuals that lived there were either at retirement age or, or nearing retirement age. And <laughs> those of you who are there are saying, what, do you, what did you call me? Um, I'm just saying they were older than we were. Okay. Let's put it that way. Uh, my wife and I were newlyweds. We were in our early 20s and uh, we moved in this basement apartment. You know what we noticed is nobody extended their hand of welcome. Nobody did. Not one. So, you know what we did? The first Sunday that we were there, we baked bread or maybe it was cookies. I don't recall. And we went door to door to all six people that had that surrounded this little uh, basement apartment that we lived in. And we knocked on the door and we said, hi, we're your new neighbors. And we live in the basement apartment and da, 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 da. And most people were very friendly. Some were standoffish. And one individual said, you know, 
<laughs> I'm a little embarrassed that I haven't come and introduced myself. To be honest with you, most people that move into that basement apartment don't last very long. And so I didn't, I knew, I saw you moving in and I, I, I didn't make the move and I should have. Okay. So we moved into the, to the apartment and typically, you know, your new neighbors will come to greet you. We did the opposite. And that's really all I was trying to do with this meeting 15 years ago when I moved into the area is just say, hey, you know, you probably know me. You've probably reviewed my work, but I've been living south of here. I'm now, I now, I've now moved into this city and, and I just wanted to extend myself and say hi. And 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 introduce myself and 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 then that's it. That was the agenda, right? One appraiser, one appraiser showed up beside my family, and uh, he and I have had a good relationship ever since. Speaking of a good relationship, got a great relationship with the guys over at A Now Software. In fact, I had dinner with them just a couple of months ago um, in, in Las Vegas. We were down there for a conference, and uh, thank you, Marty. Thank you, uh, Keith. Thank you, Greg. Thanks others at A Now. It was a, it was a fabulous time to get to know some of of their users of their product and some of their colleagues and their peers. Uh, these guys really do love appraising. They really do love valuation. Please keep in mind that A Now software was not created by some computer geek. Right, this was created by appraisers, uh, specifically Marty. Uh, Marty Haldane is was is still an appraiser, wanted to find software that would manage everything in his appraisal office and couldn't find it. So guess what? He created it and it is fabulous. It will do the job you need done because he has the insight that an appraiser should have. How do you run a business? He designed the software around that. It is absolutely incredible. Save you so much time, so much time every single week running your business. Check them out. Go to anow.com slash coach one more time. It's anow.com slash coach. Well, folks, welcome back. We are talking about uh, getting outside your appraisal cave. And uh, had an experience uh, this week, in fact, yesterday. I had an experience yesterday that uh, I guess it shouldn't come as a surprise, but it did. And basically, it was the same thing. I thought, you know, it's time. It's been a while since I introduced, reintroduced myself to my local appraisers. We're slow right now at the office. Great time to, to catch up on some back burner stuff. In other words, I've had it in the back of my mind forever to say, you know what? I need to get together with other appraisers. I just need to get outside myself. I need to do it. I need to make it work. And, um, and, and, and that was, you know, my idea here a couple of weeks ago. It was facilitated by something else, uh, that, that is, you know, secondary to the story, but, I reached out, or my office did. What we did was we found as many appraisers as we could in the local market, and I just went with the city this time, just the city, not the surrounding area. Uh, well, I mean, a little bit of surrounding area. You can't go with just the city in Idaho Falls. But I went and, and reached out to uh, to uh, a few bedroom communities, if you will. But I didn't really extend more than about a 50-mile radius. Okay, And for some of you in metro areas, you're thinking, holy cow, that's huge. Well, in Idaho, that's not very much. In fact, it, I'll tell you, it was 25 appraisers. Okay, So we reached out to 25 appraisers, sent them an email. Um, and I'm going to tell you the results of that in just a second. <laughs> <laughs> um, sent out an email, waited for the response, um, made phone calls to each and every one of them. Yes, we picked up the phone and called every single one of them and either left a voice message or talked to them directly. Um, and and then number three, we sent a second email after um, just saying, hey, I know a lot of you have an RSVP, but we do have a breakfast uh, Tuesday morning at 930 at the bagel shop and and would love to have you be a part of it. Okay. Uh, the results, one office showed up beside myself. Now that was two appraisers. So hats off to Dan and Eric. Thanks for coming. Uh, it was uh, it was Dan, the supervisor, Eric, uh, the trainee. And I know both of them and, and, and I highly respect both of them. In fact, I'll, I'll go so far as to say I recruited Eric um, uh, a while back and he uh, he went a different direction. 
um, uh, great, great individuals, um, great appraisers, uh, great people, and uh, they they showed up. Now, to the credit of some of the other appraisers, I did have some reach out to me and say, I am very interested in something like this. It just doesn't hit, you know, where I, I'm out of town. That's a bad morning for me. Uh, please, 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 let's do this again. So, I give as much credit to those individuals as I do to to well not quite as much but almost as much as I give to to Dan and Eric for showing up but uh, some of those appraisers I think were willing and would have come if the timing had been different which leads me to where I'm headed next and that is I'm not going to quit I decided this morning that this is not going to be the one and only time that I reach out to appraisers I don't know if I want to make this a monthly thing probably not I might want to make it a quarterly thing. I'm even tempted to just make it a, a biannual thing. But I do want to, on a regular basis, whatever I decide that is, uh, pick up the baton and continue to invite. Okay, I got off the phone just before I started this podcast with one of those appraisers, a female. I've never met her in person. Uh, I reached out to her. Hats off to you, Tiffany. Uh, I reached out to her and called her and, and talked to her. And she said, you know, I man, I wish I could have made it. I was I was under the weather. I had a flu bug, and I really wanted to be there. And I think it's really cool that you did this, and I really want to do it in the future. Will you please do it? And I said, you know what? Yeah, I will. Um, I'm not going to get discouraged by the fact that both times I've extended myself, and both times uh, I, I came up uh, kind of with zingers here uh, with uh, with just one office showing up in e- in each case. So, uh, but that's okay. That's okay. That's where it starts. I think that uh, this is what I told Tiffany. I said, you know, I said, I think appraisers need to get together. I do. I think they need to get together on a regular basis. They need to shake hands. They need to to break bread with one another. They need to have a conversation. We don't need to share any of our business secrets. Okay. (laughs) Like there's many of them out there anyway, right? We don't need to, we don't need to be uh, scared about, uh, you know, about this opportunity. For me, it's just more being able to put a face with a name. Now, I don't do a lot of field and desk reviews like I did in the past. I've priced myself out of that market. But that being said, um, I still see their names. Okay, I still see them coming across my desk. There's probably a few appraisers out there that hate my guts. I, I, I could probably give you a couple names. Um, and, and that's okay. You know, I, I can tell you, um, and you may think you know who you are, um, but uh, I don't have any ill feelings. And, and if you... If you showed up to one of these meetings, I would I would greet you with a with a handshake and a hug. Um, seriously, uh, I have no ill intent, no ill feelings toward any other appraiser out there. I would love to be able to continue to do this. Okay, why am I talking about this? Okay, it comes down to this, folks. It takes some effort. It takes some persistence. It probably takes some consistency. But I think that there is a huge benefit in reaching outside yourself and rubbing shoulders with and getting to know, and I'm going to call them competition just for, for, for sake of, you know what I mean. Okay. Um, but I don't see it that way. I really don't, you know, we each have our niches. We each have our things that we're good at and, and, uh, and that we present to our customers and our clients. And I just don't see it as, as some people do. Maybe I'm naive. Um, but to me, it's not about competition. It's about camaraderie. It's about reaching outside yourself. So here's my challenge, listeners. Here's my challenge, okay? In 2019, would you take on this challenge? Here's my call to action, if you will. Okay, will you will you plan one of these events, at least one in 2019, where you reach outside yourself, you get outside your appraiser cave, you ask others to do the same, and that we meet around the campfire? Will you do that in your local market? Okay, I get a chance to meet with appraisers all the time across the country, uh, on video, on telephone, and in person. But I'm talking about your local, your local jokels, okay? Your local friends, your local colleagues. Will you reach outside yourself? Make it happen. Get outside your appraiser cave in 2019. Speaking of getting outside your appraiser cave, have you heard of the Appraiser Academy? You can stay inside your appraiser cave and associate with other appraisers at the same time, folks. The Appraiser Academy is an opportunity every single month to be able to meet with other appraisers on the computer live. Okay, this is key. This is live. It's interactive. You have a speaker, you have a microphone, you have a video, and you're able to interact live with other appraisers, myself included, every single month as we share experiences, as we share 
problems, as we share fears, as we share hopes, as we share our dreams, uh, as we share our visions and our goals and our questions. And we help answer those questions and help you to get from where you are to where you need to be. I hope you'll join us. Check us out. Go to theappraisercoach.com slash memberships. Again, it's theappraisercoach.com slash memberships. You've been listening to the Appraiser Coach podcast with Dustin Harris. If you like what you hear, please give us a five-star rating and post a short review on iTunes. For more in-depth insider information on how you can make more money as a real estate appraiser, visit theappraisercoach.com and sign up for the All-Star team today. Thanks for joining us. And now, get out there and create some value.